You're currently tuned into TBD here on KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara and netitradio.com out of Tijuana. We have Ian McPhee here live in studio. How are you doing, Ian? Good. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Yeah. Loud. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a little hot. Can you hear? Can you hear through your headphones? Yeah. Are they too loud? No, they're good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, dude, your performance was sick, by the way. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. Uh, you know, it's been like a a long time coming trying to make this one happen and I'm super glad we could actually make it happen um I guess do you kind of want to just like I don't know talk about I guess how you got started into like making music and stuff like that you know what I mean yeah for sure I mean because I know you play in like other bands too and like you've had like uh you know a project called cheer for a while as well right yeah yeah do you kind of want to talk about I guess just like your beginnings and stuff and like how you got into it yeah, totally. I mean, started out, I mean, just playing guitar growing up, like, got a guitar in, like, middle school, mm-hmm. and just, like, learning random cover songs, and pretty much just, like, messing around, and not really, like, writing any kind of music, mm-hmm. and then was in, like, a punk band in high school, like, super anarcho-punk band with, like... What was that band called? That was Del Sesto. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was with Nick. It was in Time and... Yeah, hell yeah. Nico and Kyle. And just, like, friends. Just high school punk band. But mm-hmm. kind of, like, learned how to be in a band through that. Mm-hmm. And then moved to Washington for college. And was in a band Shimmer Traps mm-hmm. up there, which is kind of like a, like, dream pop, synth pop kind of band. Mm-hmm. And I was in that band for, like pretty much the entire time I lived in Washington yeah. and recorded a bunch with them, mm-hmm. played a bunch with them. That was like the main band I've been in for the most part. Mm-hmm. And then started like recording myself as like cheer, pretty much just nice. like one person yeah. bedroom kind mm-hmm. of recordings. Yeah. I was just like learning how to use logic and like learning how to record. And then still, I mean, I guess kind of like a hiatus from that or just like mm-hmm. started gradually making more just like soundscape kind of music Mm -hmm. like yeah like kind of stuff i just performed and then wanted a different project to do just that and then i was gonna say um your cheer project from what i've listened on Bandcamp, it almost sounds kind of indie too right yeah it's super like like i started it like poppy almost right yeah Yeah. there's some songs that are definitely more poppy Mm -hmm. yeah there's like it's like shoegazy like slow core kind of Mm -hmm at least in my head but then there's like definitely I did like a Fleetwood Mac cover that's like dude that's sick pretty poppy yeah yeah it's probably like as poppy as it gets and then then yeah I guess just with that was like branching away into doing yeah like more sound kind of stuff so then, you you started getting more into it like in DIY and stuff while you were in Washington right like that's how you started like I don't know doing your own like solo stuff um, I guess also before we start talking about like more of like your modern projects, you were also organizing a lot while you were up in Washington too, right? Like, a little bit. Like involved yeah. in the DIY scene or? Yeah. I wasn't like. What city was it, by the way? I went to college in Bellingham. Oh, yeah, cool. Bellingham, Washington, mm-hmm. which is like very most northwest tip of Washington, yeah. like 45 minutes south of Vancouver, mm-hmm. like two hours away from Seattle, pretty much. And, and like, where, where are you from originally, by the way? Uh, from Thousand Oaks. Okay, cool. So from down here. Yeah. And live and see me now. Mm-hmm. But that's like where my first band was. Moved yeah. Up there for college, and then kind of like inadvertently got involved with like organizing or just like mm-hmm. having friends in bands. Yeah. Like who would hit me up or mm-hmm. like would go on tour and like would want a spot in Bellingham to play. And like that's cool. What was this? What was the scene like up in? What was the scene like in Bellingham? It's good. Is it? It's like a college town, like kind of okay. similar to here. Mm-hmm. So there's like. It's like a random, it's on and off, so it's like, it depends on like who graduates that year, like mm-hmm. bands will then move back home or whatever, but mm-hmm. then like, like Death Cab for Cuties from Bellingham. That's there's random, like, that's tight. Yeah, there's lots of like weird history there and like that, like super pop, like Odessa, they're like electronic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're from Bellingham. Oh, that's yeah. random. So there's like a good music scene there and there's like lots of house shows. It's like, funny because it's also like we have Stevie Aoki from Ivy, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah everybody, every college town has to have that popular EDM artist, you know what I mean? It's so <laughs> random, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, house show scene was really good. Uh-huh. There's like just a lot of spots that have been there for years uh-huh. and then also just like someone will move to the town and like start a house show or uh-huh. like start up 
house show house and like that'll be going really well for a while then yeah. like their lease will end and like mm -hmm. one spot's done so it's constantly just like starting stopping it's overall, I mean that's like, how college towns go you know what yeah. I mean it's like very like it comes and goes you know yeah. that's kind of like how Ivy is right now like there used to be a lot of like touring bands coming through back in the day but it really just depends on who's going to school there at the time you know yeah, what I mean holding sure. it down but yeah. uh you know and it goes through waves like sometimes you just won't have anybody and then it'll pick up and be super sick for a little while you know and like yeah yeah know. that's like yeah so like right now like a few people have like asked me like who do you know in bellingham that's like still booking shows and you're like, like i have no idea i don't yeah, know i don't know like, how i know like a couple people but like i don't know who to recommend mm -hmm. to play with i don't know what spots are still going yeah but yeah did that and i guess kind of just like learned how to book shows and like a really simple way mm -hmm. through that like i've never been like a like booker or anything like that but yeah. it's just like if i can make it happen with enough notice mm -hmm. i don't know so you eventually moved back down to the 805 in simi valley you said um when did you start getting involved in music again out down here and like was it like i don't know a change compared to what you're used to up there definitely yeah uh yeah so i just moved down here in october okay just like this last october like mm -hmm. eight months ago or whatever and then nice. yeah it was definitely like a huge shift from being in like a band like the band shimmer traps that i was in like i lived with most of them most of the time in washington and we listened to shimmer traps too before right in the mix that you yeah, put together there's yeah. one like kind of like that one's a little different from most of the stuff mm -hmm. we did like that was like a kind of weirder ambient kind of prod like one release that we just made really fast like i think we recorded everything in like three days and then dude this band's big you guys have like a <laughs> ton of plays on spotify that's wild yeah yeah that's cool yeah anyways continue sorry no sorry yeah uh i lost my train of thought but yeah, yeah so you... i was up there in shimmer traps yeah and yeah. like we did a lot like the like, mm -hmm. got signed to like a like smaller like diy kind of label yeah. and like mm -hmm. put out an album during covid and that's sick yeah how'd you was, get involved with those people you just met them through like shows and stuff very randomly like i think like i first met them when i first moved there because there was like craigslist like community forum or whatever which like it's weird to think that it actually worked but it worked really well i just uh -huh. like they were in another band before that and we're like we need a second guitar player uh -huh. or whatever and then try it out with them like then eventually one person moved out yeah. and like ended up taking that spot and it kind of all just like went from there like started a new band and yeah just kept going from there but then moving back here after being like super involved with mm -hmm. like that scene and like that band and everything to like nothing down here like i knew some people like nick and bands mm -hmm. and had friends that did bands but then yeah, so I'm playing in ceramic. Yeah, you eventually now. got involved in ceramic, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's like a one of my favorite hardcore bands. Yeah, you guys are like super good, you know? Thanks. Um yeah. So how do you like playing in, in that band, I guess? Like tell ceramic tell me a little bit more about ceramic. It's sick. Yeah, I mean it's like most of the songs were already written. Like mm -hmm. that's Mark and Jeremy's project. Mm -hmm. And I think they already had a demo out and like had played some shows and stuff like that. I know they um, definitely grew and like added a few members over since they first started, right? Yeah, I think there's been like a few lineup. Like there's another guitar player and mm -hmm. then like some other people jumped yeah. in and then. We had them on TBD like very early, like a long time ago, like a year yeah. ago at this point or something. Yeah, but... I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and pretty much just like Mark got me a job at our current job. And then mm -hmm. I think, like, one of the first days there, he's like, hey, like, do you want to be in this band? And you're like, hell yeah. Yeah, I was like, sick, yeah. You're like, I never sounds, thought you would ask me, sounds Mark. Sounds perfect, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I think, like, we've been to some shows and he was like, oh, yeah, join Ceramic. Like, nothing seriously. And yeah. I was like, that'd be sick. Mm -hmm. And then it actually happened. And then, yeah, it's, I don't know, played shows around, like, the 805. and like You guys just like, went on uh, tour, right? Yeah, we went on, like, a quick little weekend run, like... Mm -hmm. How was that? It was sick. That's it was cool. fun. Where'd yeah. you guys hit real quickly? Uh, I think first show was in Oxnard mm -hmm. at OPAC, and then next night was Fresno, mm -hmm. and then San Francisco. Nice. And just back down here, but... Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It was, like, perfect little quick thing, and then I think we're trying to do, like, another run in the next couple of months. But... And you, you guys also just released an EP, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the full, like, EP just came out, like, two days ago, mm -hmm. which is, like, ceramic. I think it's just, like 
self-titled ceramic but then the label that we're on practice hatred put out like like a tour promo which mm -hmm. is two songs from that ep yeah. and then like the second demo which is like another just different two songs mm -hmm. but yeah so like four different cassette releases have come out that's cool pretty sure and then yeah i mean yeah i pretty much just i've like helped write some stuff but like jeremy and mark it's, it's mostly like their, their project, project yeah. yeah and like jeremy does all the art all the design mm -hmm. stuff for it and like screen prints all the shirts and i know dude they're really their design is really sick he's so good at i it. know yeah. dude jeremy does such a good job at the design yeah. like all the flyers that he makes and says sick yeah um yeah they're like the best and it's like we'll need something super fast and i'll be like oh like i'm busy but like let me see what i can do and it's mm -hmm. just like great yeah, yeah. That was solid. So I guess bringing it back over to your your solo project, Ian McPhee. So um, I guess do you have anything new coming out soon? Like you working on anything new? Like what's going on with that? A little bit. I've been just like, like I put out like a like demo, mm -hmm. like that everything release on Bandcamp, which is pretty back much in just like, like May, right? Yeah, yeah. it's just like two songs, mm -hmm. just to like get some music out yeah. to like have for playing shows and mm -hmm. stuff and. I've, like, recorded a little bit, but mostly just been trying to, like, play live uh -huh. as much as possible and, like, book as much stuff as I can and, like, yeah. I know, speaking of, you have a couple gigs, so if people wanted to see you play live, where are you playing? Uh, I'm playing on Friday at the Oracle in L.A., the Oracle Tavern. Is that with Keone? Yeah, that one's with Keone. Yeah, dude, Chuck is so sick. yeah. Yeah, I've never actually met him, but his music's sick. Amazing, then, dude. Like, the, it's just so, like, jangly and, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It sounds like you're underwater no, totally. and just jangly yeah. underwater music. It's so good. Yeah, there's, like, so much movement in it and, like, super soft, like, synth, mm -hmm. like, twinkly kind of sounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. So that show's on Friday. That'll be sick. That's in L.A.? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's at the Oracle Tavern. Type. I think he's, like, Buer, B-U-R-E. I think they're doing, like, a collaborative set. Oh, nice. And then like one other artist and then me and then yeah august 26th there's the tbd show the drows and spring mm -hmm. and uh lula asplund yeah i forget the other artist yeah and, and then eye candy and two brothers that's yeah. gonna be an yeah, insanely stacked stacked, gig. Yeah. <laughs> stacked as hell dude yeah. um almost said the f word right there <laughs> on air um yeah, dude, that'll be fun. Hopefully anybody listening, if you enjoyed his set, you can come out to those gigs and see him live. Um, I guess wrapping it up, just because like, we don't have much time left here, uh, I do want to ask one more question. I saw on your Twitter that you also write. You you like write for, you do like music journalism a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. That's like not super old, but I guess I kind of stopped doing it. Like I went to school for English mm -hmm. and then... In Bellingham, where I went to college, like there was a local paper called like mm -hmm. What's Up. Mm -hmm. That was just like the local music magazine. It's oh, been around sick. for like thirty years or something. Oh, I think wow. they actually just stopped. But it was like a that's staple in yeah. just like local Bellingham like DIY mm -hmm. music and like every show would be like posted in there. Like they were super like tuned into like what was happening in Bellingham. So mm -hmm. started writing through them and then You eventually started writing for post trash, right? Yeah, I was gonna say post trash. Like I just followed them on Twitter and I saw someone retweet like wanna write for post trash? Like mm -hmm. send us a DM or like email us. Post trash is cool. It's like I think one of the dudes from that label exploding in sound, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like his blog or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah it's sick. Yeah. And like exploding in sound is like so many good bands on there. They're just like, like a staple indie label, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like Pile, yeah. like Avlov, yeah. Stove and all They're those They're so bands. sick, yeah. 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 So like writing for that blog was super cool. Like he was literally just like, yeah, like choose a band you want to write about and then did that and then I guess kind of like branched out a little bit. Like wrote for this one Treble for a while mm -hmm. that was just like another like kind of like DIY mm -hmm. like smaller blog or whatever but mm -hmm. then kind of just like ran out of time doing it for the most part i feel like, like working now and it happens you know bands and it's stuff. hard to yeah. keep up yeah but that was really fun it'll always be there if you want to want to come back you know what i mean yeah totally um anyways uh i think we have one or two fan questions here or listener questions yes. should we take them yeah let's take them okay we got one um <laughs> which is perfect since we're running out of time but this one says what's your deepest darkest secret uh 
That's kind of a rough one, huh? You'll never know. Yeah. Oh, that was a really good answer, actually. Yeah, perfect answer. Flawless, flawless execution <laughs> for that one. Um, okay, so I think that kind of does it for listener questions, unless anybody wants to hop onto TBD Presents on Instagram and ask something last yeah, minute on the little the sticker. Chat. Get in the chat now. Yeah, hop on the chat um, and ask a question. Uh, but other than that, where can people keep up with all things Ian McPhee, upcoming shows, upcoming releases, any of that? Yeah, uh, pretty much just my Instagram. Cool. Like, it's just Ian McPhee. I think there's like a period instead of an A because mm-hmm. Ian McPhee is taken. And then I have like <laughs> a like link in bio kind of thing in there that has like like this band camp, like Ian McPhee band camp, mm-hmm. like cheer band camp, and he has like Spotify in there and everything. And Yeah. Yeah, Instagram for the most part for Hell yeah. any band or project. Cool, dude. Well, um, we'll give it a couple more or like a minute here to see if anybody submits anything else. But I do have one last question. It's kind of the biggest one of the show. Are you ready for it? Yeah. It's a huge one. Okay. Yeah, don't get too nervous. I see you sweating. I know. Squirming. <laughs> so um, a rat is going to jump into your mouth. Do you want this rat to jump into your mouth head first or butt first and why? Uh, it's a doozy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I mean, rats have giant tails. I was going to say butt first. Because then if you need to get it out, just jump right out. It's already... Logical. That's, going yeah, that's pretty logical. Yeah, it's just I mean, like... It's a huge tail. And yeah, see, the tail would go down your throat. Yeah, I feel like it was mouth first, though. Like, I've had friends with rats and stuff, and they chew so much, so I just mm-hmm. wouldn't... In my mouth, it's terrifying. Yeah, dude, that would be scary. Um, I always tell people there's like a like that medieval torture technique where they would just put like a rat like in a bucket on top of you and it just burrow through you. You know what oh, I mean? Sure, so like, yeah. how would it be any day if it's in your mouth, dude? It's just gonna burrow through. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, who, there's no telling where that thing's gonna go. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, that's all we have for today. Let me actually check here to see if we got any more last minute questions and uh i think we're good so that's all we have for today here on tbd on kcsb fm 91.9 in santa barbara and then at radio.com out of tijuana next week we have a gardener out of i forget the state but the east coast and it'll be sick we have an interview with him um this has been ian mcphee thanks again ian this was super fun yeah thanks thomas and i'll put the archive up super soon and so anybody that missed the performance or the interview you can catch it there Thanks again. Sweet. Thank you.